Travis. Goons and mutants, I bid you. Hello, it's been a while. I've been one busy dude, one busy hombre. Um, finally getting back into this side of things, which is nice. Super busy, gosh. I'm back inside of that dual showman. Remember the one with our favorite Fender Tech? RC. Look at this. So I'm getting the, the bias board. I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this board. Every single one of these chassis grounds that's using the, the power transformer mounting bolt points as an anchor. Every one of these things have failed. These guys need to go to the chassis, and that's exactly where they're gonna go. Bye. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stick it right there in a the corner. Stick it there. These all gotta go. So the rectifier on the bias supply shorted, and then it pulled excess current through that F and T. Just split it wide open. So. We're not going to leave anything to chance. This is not in a signal path. This is not about tone. This is about reliability. So you got to go. You just got to go, buddy. This is an amp that will be rented out. So the owner's reputation is at stake. This is not an amp that's being preserved for a museum or some dude's bedroom. So his his beer buddies can occasionally come by on a weekend and they can sit there and gawk at it. That's not what this is. This is an amp that's gonna be played. Um, it's probably gonna see a lot of studio time. So it's gotta be right. Oops, where was I? I wasn't done. I wasn't done. You guys are distracting me. Oh, I've got plans for a video coming up, you guys. Guess what? You know all the hardware you see on your 50s and 60s Fender amps? Now, do you realize that there's an Ace hardware right across from Fender's old radio repair shop? That's been there since the 50s? Where do you think you got that screen door material from? that was being used as a, a Faraday shield on the inside of the, the cabs. Guess who still owns the business? The same people that were there back when Leo was running around down the aisles. Obviously, he sourced his own parts, but there's no doubt that he interacted with those people there. There's no doubt about it. We're gonna talk to those guys. We're going to get all the backstories, get all the angles that haven't been covered, all the nerd stuff. Not just the, the lineage of the guitars themselves and the impact that they made on music and culture. Not all that stuff, which is super cool. Let's just, let's just get real. That is super cool. But I'm talking about the impact that the factory had on a local community. There's a lot of people that are still there. That were there back in the day. A lot of people. Still there. So, I'm going to be... Um, making some relationships with the folks that are at uh, his old repair shop. It's now, a, I think it's now a furniture store. See if we can get a tour. See if we can overlay that with some public records and some uh, possible floor plans. 
um, especially for the factory, which is now Auto Body Repair Center, or it's just a string of uh, body shops. I wonder if any of the old fixtures are there. Anything's been repurposed. I mean, spray booths, of course. Is anything still there? Not like you're gonna find Lupe's old tape dispenser, but something's gotta be there. There's gotta be, there's gotta be something there that we can look at, right? There's gotta be something cool there that we can check out. So let's do that. So anyway, that's, that's in the works. That's literally in the works now. And that's part of the reason why I haven't made a video in a bit. But I'm no Keith. So it's just going to be something informative and kind of cool. But I want it to be a step up above what I normally do. Because I, I think it's special. I think it's the stuff that we really care about. Yeah, the, the strats are cool. Yeah, it used to be called a no-caster. Um, it was a broadcaster prior. I'm talking about the tellies. And all that. All that, all, all that trivia is cool. But I'm more interested in uh, the urban archaeology, if you will. I mean, I'm right there. Why would I not take advantage of, of my location, right? And do that. I could take you guys along. Why would I not do that for you? I just got to figure out the timing. And I have to make the right relationships. But I think we can get it done. You know? I mean, it's not like we're some creepy uh, Trekkies who are going to um, Captain Kirk's old old primary school trying to interview his, his old teacher or anything like that. It's a different level of creepiness. It's still creepy. It's still super creepy, don't get me wrong. But I know a, a lot of you guys are like, well, why aren't you... Why don't you just... Why are you so meticulously cleaning out these eyelets? It's, it's because there's so many broken solder joints in this amp. I'm not going to just put new solder on top of old solder. It's just got to all be cleaned out. That's why labor is so expensive. This is very time consuming. It's a labor of love. It's a labor of love. And I don't have much time for this type of labor today. As the holidays coming up, and that puts me in a bind time wise. It actually forces me away from the camera and from documenting what I do. It forces me away from that. See? You see that? This 470 is going to be replaced with, um, with a much nicer Omite part. Um, all these guys are going bye bye. This dude shorted. So. Off you go. I'll keep the jumpers in place, but that's about it. And then we'll uh, get this thing back. Bye. And that's the carnage. That's what it takes. Not really enjoying the the quality of the shots here. The lighting. It's a it's a lighting thing. It's less about the quality of the shots, isn't it? Less about the quality of the shots. You just sit there and soak. You just think about what you've done. You just soak on it, buddy. You just soak on it. We keep these little jumpers there. They're not hurting anybody. Stay down. 
you stay down. I'm gonna get a soft bristled brass brush. Say that three times fast. I like it. I like it. I really do. I really do. Look at that. This is all the junk that becomes conductive. All that funk right there. All that stuff becomes conductive over time. Some of this is flux and some of it's not. And then sometimes I'll, um, I'll take an iron, like a, li a literal iron, and I'll steam these boards and then I'll flatten them out. Um, if I have time and uh, resources, if, if that's, depending on how deep the customer wants to go. There we go. And I try to keep the little grease pencil marks as well. That's why I covered that up. I like to preserve all that stuff. That was somebody's hard work. That was somebody's labor. That's somebody's legacy. So let's get this board rebuilt. There's that shiny new board. Just got to solder her up. I like it. All right, so she's ready to go back in. It's a little lead that I add. Just some 20 gauge bus wire for the ground and uh, otherwise ready to go back in.